Uh, we're here with Dr. Shi again, and a new guest that he's connected us with out of Orlando, Dr. Vonda Reich. Dr. Wright is a published author. She's going to tell us about her books a little bit here, but she's also an active orthopedic surgeon, and she is really excited about NMN and using it for with her some of her patients, herself and also her patients. So tell us about your, your books to give people some perspective on you, Dr. Wright. Thank you so much for having me today. And of course, uh, Dr. Shi for recommending me. So I am a uh, orthopedic sports surgeon, fellowship trained at the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York. And I have spent my career harnessing the power of mobility to save people from the ravages of chronic disease. Because for me as a surgeon, I am really interested in the technical part, but even more interested on how to take care of the whole person whether it's their, their aches and pains or whether it's NMN. So I decided in, in 2004, when I got out of my fellowship, that I just didn't want to be like another fitness cheerleader, like rah, rah, go move around, exercise is good for you because I'm an academic and I need to prove what I'm saying is right. So what we know from population studies, meaning if we just take a random sample of the population, is that our population in the United States, 70%, are sedentary. So any data we have from population studies is about sedentary people. And so you get the impression that aging is an inevitable decline from vitality to frailty in which we spend 20 years dying. And I knew that wasn't true. I knew it just because I knew it in my heart, but I also knew it because my own father, uh, who when I got out of my fellowship was about to turn 70, was still a, a, a distance marathoner. I mean, he was critically vital. So I knew it couldn't be true. So I spent the first 15 years of my career really doing the research that showed that by harnessing mobility as a simple tool, you know, I hadn't even plugged in nutrition and things like uh, NAD plus, NMN, or of the other more sophisticated now, simply mobility. I found that uh, we do not significantly slow down if we use uh, if we use athletic performance as a biomarker of aging. We do not significantly slow down until we're in our 70s. We can maintain our our bone density. We can maintain our lean muscle mass. And a study that took me five years to do because it was so carefully controlled. We were one of the first labs to publish data that we can maintain our executive function of our brain by harnessing the power of mobility. So I had all these data. Obviously, I have the gift of gab and can talk about it. And I realized that if I only talked to the 100 or so people who came through my office in a week, that I was really not doing my part as an educator. Because, you know, doctor means, means teacher from the original language, right? So I needed to teach the public what they could do to live healthy, vital, active, joyful. So I started writing books. And I got to tell you, Marcel, I got a lot of criticism from academia for writing public facing books, you know, a book called Fitness After 40, or a book called Guide to Thrive, or my third book was called uh, Younger in Eight Weeks, where we just took all the research. And uh, it was like writing research papers for the public and just divided what you needed to do into eight weeks because I'm convinced that we have more control over our active aging and how we feel than we give ourselves credit for. But just so that I satisfied the academic part of my life, I did write a textbook. It's called Masterful Care of the Aging Athlete. Um, and so I have two books coming out this summer. Uh, one is another sports book for young athletes, but one is really updating Fitness After 40 and Guide to Thrive with all the new modern tools that I am currently using, uh, not only in my own life, but in the lives of my patients. Because since I started this in 2004, uh, I love a term Dr. Shi puts all over his literature. We are using the actionable biomarkers, the actionable interventions, not 8,000 esoteric things that could happen, but the actionable, because here's what I know as a clinician, I've been taking care of people. I was a nurse first, a cancer nurse first. Since, so since 1989, I've been taking care of people. And this is what I know. 
If we give people 8,000 things to do because it's possible, people will do nothing. But if I give them two or three, and then when we've optimized that part of their health, two or three more, we will go on a journey of health optimization. Then I can pivot to peak performance and then ultimately precision longevity, right? So that's the journey I take my patients on. And I'm obviously really excited about it because I've just gone on and on to your audience about it. No, this is, this is I can totally relate. As my viewers know, I do the same thing. I get on these rants and I can't stop because I am genuinely so excited. As I told you in our pre-call, uh, my own personal experiences taking in them and, and then all of the other wellness activities I've made, I've documented this many times in many different uh, aspects, you know, as far as even just stretching and walking and, you know, cutting out sugar. And by the way, uh, Dr. Wright doesn't, she's also very active and uh, doesn't eat sugar. And I, I guess you've probably avoided uh, processed foods as well. Um, tell me, Nothing you mentioned, package. yeah, you mentioned a moment ago, um, when you were explaining your background that some in academia, was it in academia or was it in the medical industry, the medical profession were put off by your books when you started this front facing um, aspect of your career? Like these are all today. These are all great YouTube titles. <laughs> you know, all your book oh titles gosh. are totally current. Right. But so you were you ahead of your time. I was, and I always have been in the innovations that I've thought about. Um, you know what I think it was? I think I am old enough that I was raised in the medical era where we are not digital natives, right? I got my first cell phone at 38, right? So I'm 56. And so I come from an era where, I'm not kidding you, you're going to laugh out loud, or maybe you know this, but when I trained as a nurse, nurses stood when the doctor walked in the room. Or I know that's how old this, this was. So, so doctors didn't advertise. They didn't educate. It was very paternalistic. Like you do this. Cause I said, so and no, for no other reason, but here's what I know. My patients are smart and they deserve the best information. So if I'm going to be one of those doctors who doesn't educate them, then shame on me. And I knew that. And also my parents are both educators. They were professors. And so I come from this background of educating people. So I thought, how am I going to educate people? But I think what was so offensive to, uh, or not offense, I don't know if offense is the right word, but certainly my profession thought I had, I was- Were they threatened? Person. Were they threatened? A horn coming out. How dare she talk right. directly to the public? How dare she have a website and make videos? How dare she dumb down her research into a high school level so that everybody can understand it? If you read my books, it's except for the one textbook, they're not textbooks, but you know what? By making the information digestible, which is what digital and YouTube now does, more people are helped. So it went so far. I don't talk about this very often, but I love being right and shaking my finger now at the establishment <laughs> who shut me down. But when I was yeah. a young surgeon, six years into my practice or so doing all these things, you know, even running exercise programs on in our indoor football field, because I knew how much we were going to change lives. Mm. Uh, I got called into the hospital and had to sit before a tribunal of hospital lawyers telling me to cease and desist with my crazy public facing education. And I said, uh, okay, uh, I hope you're telling every other doctor who's trying to educate. And so, you know what I did, Marcel, this is such a personal story, but it's how passionate I am about it. I got my finances in order so that nobody could hurt me. Right. So you, no one could fire me. And if they did, you know, you can pay your mortgage for six months. And then I continued to do what I know is right, which is educating the public, doing interventions that may at the time seem outside of standard medicine. But, you know, even today, I don't think doctors are able to do everything we're capable of. And part of that is financial. You know, we are so controlled in this company and this country by the ravages of insurance companies. I mean, the only people benefiting from insurance, frankly, is the insurance companies. 
and we don't need to go into the finances of doing surgery or how patients are suffering from it. But doctors are sometimes really confined to such narrow amounts of time. I can't do everything I need to do for people in the 15 minutes that I need to spend with people and able to keep the lights on in my office. So, you know, I have separated my practice. I now have a pure orthopedic practice. We're going to take care of you. We're going to do surgery. But if people want to spend hours with me and talk like this, and I have people coming in today, we're going to talk about bone health. We're starting with this woman's DEXA scan. So I know how much I can push her physically without breaking her. Right. And so that takes time. And so I've had to separate my two practices, but it's worth it, right? It's worth it to take good care of people. So it's it's not just continuity of care, it's the quantity of care that matters as well, it sounds like. I mean, because we're I, in I a, think... we have a continuity crisis in medical, in medical, uh, in the medical institutions today, or medical field, I should say. Well, um, I think it's gotten to the point. A different this... doctor all the time. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, it's people, okay. I'm, sorry, I'm clumsily, okay. I'm clumsily responded because I'm so blown away with your comments. Um, no, that doctors don't have enough. They're not just seeing their patients too short of a period. They only have 10 or 15 minutes but they're not even seeing the the same patient again and again and again. Because if you're in an HMO or if you're going to an evening clinic or whatever to get your care, you're not even seeing your doctor. Well, and that's true. And um, the other thing that's happened, I don't know if it's happening in Germany where you are, but certainly in the United States that we now have generations of subhealth, which is another Dr. She term, subhealth. I call it healthy-ish or not even healthy-ish, completely wrecked. Some people have been healthy-ish, very few are, live in optimum health. But in this country, we've had at least three or four generations now where if you're, if, you're, if you're the child, it's very likely your parents aren't healthy. If you're an unhealthy parent, it's because probably your parents, your grand, the child's grandparents were unhealthy. And you know, the great-grandparents, it's a health is a generational issue. So uh, it's more than just the index person being unhealthy. You've probably got an entire family system that doesn't know a thing about why green leafy vegetables and lean proteins, whether it's animal or plant, far outweighs packaged food and added sugar. They just don't know. And it's generational. So there's no way to break the cycle of food scarcity, a generational uh, under knowledge about what health even means in 15 minutes, impossible, right? So therein lies the, the issue. But I don't know if you wanted to go down this pathway, but because there are things to do and I'm trying to do them for my patients. You've, I've lived through it. I am, I am optimally healthy right now. And, and, you know, I'm, I use this crazy term to you, um, Dr. Shi, before you got on, I had said, you know, I, I, I struggle for words sometime, but my own history has been, I've gone from menopausal misery. I, I had all the things to midlife mastery by, by becoming a student of everything we possibly can do. And aside from maybe lifting weights a couple more times a week, I'm not sure what else I could do. You can, yeah, I've kind of reached my max too. So I'm just kind of writing it out and I just sort of making these <laughs> small little changes because there's no more time in the day I get done and that's I'm, it. I'm, I'm thankful for where I am. And that's it's great. Been a, it's, you know, it's been a little journey like yours, but it's worth taking. The, you know, Mark Hyman uh, is someone I've, I've been following recently and I just sort of edited a video that he did an appearance uh, on network television talking about how, you know, sugar causes cancer and how it's causing uh, processed foods are, are, you know, damaging our health. But to what you were saying about it being generational, you know, he said people are told it's their fault because they're told to diet and exercise. They're told to diet and exercise. He said, but our whole, you know, food supply has been hijacked. And um, because we're eating so unhealthy and because we're kind of basically programmed, he didn't use the word program, but we're, we're just bombarded with bad options constantly 
that people don't stand a fighting chance. You know, it's not really their fault. And and I sort of took that to mean, you know, it's almost like the government saying, well, it's not our fault. You, people aren't dieting and exercising. No, the food supply is broken. You know, it's, it's well, I'm getting off on another tangent here, but I'm talking about foods. And just yeah. to make a segue to what we mostly, I spent a lot of time talking about NMN because it was such a huge turn for me at that moment in time. I talked to you a little bit in our in our conversation about what really the moment of change was when I started taking NMN. Now you're and in China they're try, there's a movement right now by the way Dr. Shi to make NMN a food. I don't know if you've heard about this. That oh, yeah. we're going the opposite way. They actually want to make it a food. You are a proponent of NMN, Dr. Wright, correct? I mean I think you take it yourself. I do. And you also, so, I'm yeah. using the word prescribe. It's not a drug, but you suggested or recommend it to. I suggest it. Yeah. Can and you tell you us know, a little it, bit about um, how, why, and what you, you see? So Dr. She will tell you that I, um, in my journey, have been a skeptic. And I've given him a hard time originally. I think the first meeting I had with him and there was somebody else on the line. I, I don't, I apologize now publicly, Dr. She, if okay. I was. <laughs> If I was rude and short with you, because I thought I knew it all, because I'm a surgeon trained in the best houses in the world, right? So that was my platform. I know what I'm talking about. But you know what? Uh, my ego is no longer so big that I that I can't be wrong, right? So I so I am a student of 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 smart people. Like I'm critical. I won't follow BS, but I'm a student of smart people. And so I started really listening and reading. And Dr. Shi was saying, you know what, we got to measure your int intracellular uh, NAD plus, and you should be on NMN. And I had already started working with um, peak performers who wanted to feel better, right? Executives, doctors, pro athletes who felt healthy-ish. They knew what it meant in their youth to be peak performers, but somehow now that they had passed the 4.0, which frankly, people, if you're not 40 yet, you don't know how good it's going to get. I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be great because lower than 40, you're so young, you don't have it all together. Or your kids are tiny and, or if you even have them yet, because I had my biological child at 40. So, right. I'm going to tell you 40 and above is amazing, but so I had already started working with people like that who wanted to squeeze the life out of life. And so in doing so, um, I started using uh, the biomarker kits that Dr. Shi's uh, company makes. And one of them was NAD+. And when I started, I may have told you this, um, Jen, but you know, every afternoon I had, well, number one, I had already eliminated sugar. I had done that for myself. Right. And I can describe to you what a detox for sugar was like in my life and in the patients of, that I take care of. But, um, I, every day I I'm a morning person. I would be done mentally and physically between two and three o'clock in the afternoon. So I would plan my day so that if I need to do really productive things like surgery, writing papers, writing books, that I was that I was mentally done by three. I could build a house after three, you know, give me some physical thing to do, but mentally. So mm -hmm. I think the first time Dr. She measured my NAD plus, you probably have the data somewhere. I'm just going to say it's 20, right? It's it was 20. Yeah. So, you know, young people have anywhere north of uh, 60, right? But I showed up on the doorstep at 20. And so in my skepticism, hoping that this white powder was not going to get me stopped at the borders and investigated, you know, so I use this brand, Dr. She produces. I started taking it uh, and I only take one scoop a day. And um, over time, it solved my energy problem. So that, you know, now with your everything, mental, I, your mental energy, my mental energy. And now with everything I do, I am good to go until I am starting my nighttime routine. I start my nighttime, routine, my bedtime routine about 830 at night because I am in bed by 930, which is part of my, you know, protecting my sleep regimen. But I'm good to go till about 830 at night, which is a huge difference for me um, because part of my struggle with midlife 
Uh, and listen, my midlife came at me because uh, I may have had extra midlife burdens because um, I was a surgical resident for seven years and didn't sleep. Listen, we don't sleep. So that's a big problem, right? I had a baby at 40. That's some brain tough fog. I had the natural effects of of lower energy and a man because I was of a certain age. So I may have a bigger aging load than than other people listening. But um, anyway, I started paying attention to things like mitochondrial energy. And, you know, ironic, when I was in college, I had access to an electron microscope. And I just took all these pictures of mitochondria and muscle. So I was fully aware of what they did and the interaction of muscle and the mitochondria that feeds them. But, um, you know, not until I started paying attention did I understand that we needed to replenish our, our intracellular energy stores. And it, it, it has helped me. I mean, I'm actually not a paid, I am not a paid PR person for NMN, but I sound like it just because it's made a difference in my life, actually. I've been, yeah, I talk about this topic. I won't get too much into this, but yeah, you know, I've been offered like so much money to talk about this or that brand or that brand. I take a brand, I share a code about it and I talk about it and that's it. Um, and they're kind of, they have a relationship with Dr. She, so it's, it's called do not age. And that's the NMN I take, but I gotta be honest with you. I'm Please. a little blown away with this because the things that you're saying, Dr. Wright, are the things I've been hoping for. And so to hear them come from you, to hear them come from you as a medical uh, professional practicing uh, surgery on people and making the self-discovery is just mm -hmm. almost it's in a way it's a we've come full cycle. You know, it's it's a dream come true. I, I'm not uh, I'm sorry to, to overstate it a little bit here, but it truly if we could replicate what you're doing, we could help literally millions of people. And I feel like we're at the beginning of some huge revolution and to see it play out, it just kind of takes your breath away. So that's why I kind of had the wind blown out of me there for a moment. Couldn't even talk because. Well, you know what? I'm trying to replicate it for my private clients. That's what I was talking to you about. You know, it's not, it's not the 8,000 things. That's why I've divided yeah. how I take care of people into three phases, optimum health, then peak performance then precision longevity, because we can get into really esoteric things, but I find people jump to that without taking care of the basics. So, I mean, I don't want, I don't want your listeners to think that NMN is what I started with, but there are other things that I do when I say I'm maxed out, I've mastered midlife, if you will. And if you don't mind, I just want to categorically run through them. So, and see if you agree, right? Sure, so sure. I mentioned that that I am now good to go until about 8.30 when I start my bedtime routine. Well, I literally, after my whole life of being a surgeon, a surgical resident, and not being permitted to sleep, I protect my sleep. It yeah. is critical. You cannot be a peak performer without it. So sleep, right? Sleep Number two, yeah. mobility. I am still a mobility doc. I am still the orthopedic surgeon I always was. I still am harnessing mobility as a superpower. And so for people who work with me, we work on zone, we work on understanding their um how to use their heart rate to optimize their metabolic health. So instead of going out and doing high intensity interval training all the time, overtraining, getting hurt, ending up in my office. I now uh, train people via their heart rate and lactate uh, threshold to do base training, zone two training three hours a week with two high intensity episodes twice a week. And then uh, for midlife people, we need to lift heavy weights, right? We need to recruit muscle and build lean muscle mass. Um, and doing that means lifting heavy, not lifting the little pink weight 62 times. It means for me, uh, power lifting, deadlifting, back squatting, low reps, high weight, right? So that's number two, that's mobility. Number three is we've already talked about smart nutrition. I am not a simple carb eater. I am not a sugar eater. That has helped my inflammation tremendously, right? Because uh, I'm an old athlete and I, I used to, be inflamed and painful all the time. Mm -hmm. So 
So those are two of the simple things. So, you know, I've gone a little, this is the peak performance and, and uh, precision longevity. You know, after I optimize my health, I'm so geeky. I want to know what my sugar is doing at all time. And so I'm not diabetic, but I wear a continuous glucose monitor because wow. I want to know what, what is happening. Not I have fi figured it out, but now I'm so addicted to it. So, so smart nutrition. And then, you know, we already talked about NMN, but as a woman, I need a lot of fiber. So I can't get enough fiber in my diet. I can't get 25 grams a day. So I take fiber. Um, what do you take, by the way, uh, specifically? If you... Oh, yeah, there's a company called, a Korean company called uh, Riman, R-I-M-A-N. And they have a um, fiber supplement that I take. It gives me about 10 extra grams a day. I can give you the link. I, you know, it's. Uh, we don't, is this, is this, is, is getting that extra fiber specific to, uh, we, we don't get enough female viewers at times and we don't cover enough female issues. Is this more towards more, even more important for female or, but also important to men or is it oh, kind of really, an equal? Yeah, no, no. It's very important for everyone. The reason okay. it's housed within the, you know, women need more fiber is because during perimenopause, which the critical decade is to prepare for menopause is 35 to 45. I call it the we can have a whole show about this, but the critical decade to get your stuff together when you still have enough estrogen, because then about 45 on average, perimenopause starts happening where estrogen fluctuates wildly. We become estrogen dominant when uh, our uh, progesterone wanes off. And then finally, we have our day, our one day of menopause, and then we're postmenopausal, right? But during this 10 year, 15 year span, uh, we become highly inflamed. Estrogen is very important for helping to control cortisol levels and inflammation. Mm. So when so when we talk about all the anti-inflammatory interventions for women, it, it it is also augmented by when uh or made worse by our best friend estrogen walking out the door. Now here's mm. the deal for all your male listeners. Men go through menopause. If you're a man with aches and pains everywhere or mm. keep pulling tendons, you're like, what's wrong with me? Am I falling apart? My tendons are popping all over the place. You know what I do first after I treat your tendons? I measure your testosterone hmm. because you know, men's sex hormones fluctuate and that men with very low testosterones are more susceptible to tendon injuries. So it, it's, wow. it's, um, it is a, a lack of information for men to think that only women go through um, age-related uh, hormone fluctuations. Wow, that is huge. That is, I have so many. I'm on my third page of notes. People see me looking down yes. constantly. I'm literally just taking notes, even though I can go watch, back and watch the video. The act of taking notes it just freezes everything in my mind. Um, what have you seen? And I'm all for a holistic approach. I'm all for this. I love that you boiled it down to like three main things. That is so great because, you know, sometimes you can get away with these things and people feel overwhelmed. And if the more you can simplify such a protocol, the better. Um, but from NMN, and, uh, what have you seen? Let, let me uh, let me rephrase that because I don't want to just be NMN specific, but I know that it's a, a big role player here. So that being said, what I, aren't you destroying your patient uh, supply when you make them all healthy and they don't get injured? <laughs> what do you see with your patients? Do they stop coming to you? You you go, you make them healthy, you don't see them anymore. Uh, that would be an amazing problem to have. <laughs> be amazing. But with, I don't know how many people, 300 million people in this country, 50% right. of whom are over 40. I don't think that's going to be a problem for a while. But listen, sure. are you kidding me? If I could help everybody feel like they've mastered midlife instead of feeling like they've fallen apart, feeling like they're going crazy, being aching all the time, suffering from the ravages of dying for 20 years when your belly covers your shoes, are you kidding me? If I could be out of a job because of that, let's go. But the reality is that 
people are fine being fine, right? People, how are you today? I'm fine. People are okay with that. If people were not okay with being fine, they would be motivated to do something about it. And so over my career, trying to figure out how to motivate people has been a big part of it. That's, you know, I've written motivational books, right? But here's what I've discovered, Marcel, is that, you know, when I started my career, I took the approach of handholding. I am going to handhold you through this. I, Dr. Wright, am physically going to show up Thursday and Saturdays to guide you through two hours of exercise. I'm going to go to dinner with, I mean, I tried that. And it helps some people, but that's not the way. Then I tried to point my crooked finger at them and say, you are going to die. You're going to break your hip, which is true. You're going to fall. You're going to break your hip. 50% of you will never return to pre-fall function and a third of you will die. That kind of approach. I tried that. Scaring people to death does not work. Here's what motivates people that I've discovered. Two things. Hearing personal stories like yours and mine or a person I write about in my book named Mary, who, who really taught me a lot about caring about herself. She read one of my books and she just decided, and this is the critical piece. You have decided, I have decided, Mary in my book has decided that we are worth the daily investment in our health. We are worth taking care of. You know, we take care of our cars who are inanimate objects. We take care of our pets who we love, but so many of us take care of everybody but ourselves. So the biggest motivator I have found that I can help with for my patients, sometimes it is holding their hand. Sometimes it is stating it very ruthlessly, but it's always them coming to the re realization that they are worth the daily investment in their health. I got to stop that, you once. I got to stop you one second here because that is so well said. Everything you just said is so well said. And my viewers get mad when I interrupt my my guests. So I'm, I apologize to everybody for interrupting. But what you just said, for me, it's so real because I told you the story about my eyes coming back. I've been doing what I do. And I tell my, my viewers this all the time. Um, I've been doing the things I do because this channel provides an, an accountability, right? So it's constantly in my mind. It's a constant reminder. Oh, two videos a week. I got to go face people. So I keep going. I keep going. I keep going. I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for that accountability. So I try to encourage people to create that accountability. But to your point, when I got my eyes tested and I was stumbling out of the eye clinic, you know, just in shock, how well I could see with the correction with the test glasses. Uh, doctor, she doesn't know the story maybe yet, but I just had my eyes uh retested after 18 months of NMN and the numbers are through the roof. I can see 2020 now correctable from 125 in the, in the left eye to one to 200. They were the techs in the, in the eye clinic were all in shock. They've never seen it before. And the right eye is the weak eye went from 80% correctable to 125. And with both eyes, I could read 2020. I could read the smallest print they had, but it was, that's what popped into my mind, Dr. Wright, what you said, I realized in that moment, it was worth it. Like it was worth it. And that value, that self value, that self, um, yeah, that it manifested for me. And so I don't, I don't know that I need the channel anymore. I'm going to keep doing it, but I don't need it anymore <laughs> to motivate me. Right. I'm going to do this regardless because now it's worth it. Now I know it's worth it. Strange that it took me 18 months and I've had a lot of other successes but that was a moment that cemented that it's worth it to me. So I, I just had to speak to that because you brought up some points that just got to me so well. And I hope that people will also have that awakening. It's not just about, you know, otherwise you'll slip, you'll backslide and you will fall. <laughs> you, you you won't take care of yourself. I see that too. I see people go on NMN, off NMN because they haven't made that full-time commitment or they haven't created that accountability uh, apparatus for them to, to make sure that they stay the course. 
but mm-hmm. how we can make people that guys it's worth doing and we're not just talking about nmn here it's a it's a holistic approach dr right. she you've been listening to us all can you weigh in on some of these points or maybe even speak to where we're at because you keep bringing us these doctors which bless you for um where how are we in this curve how many doctors have you converted to this way of of thinking uh, about wellness, NAD levels, biomarker levels that can be repaired, changed through supplementation. Uh, where are we at, Dr. Shi? Sure. Let, let me say I uh, I was listening very, very uh, carefully because I'm blown away by what, what the Dr. Wright said, and I totally agree with her. And so... In terms of our progress, we are uh, signing up clinics on a daily basis. And just like wow. what uh, we have done with Dr. Wright, and we have to provide uh, the new information that are coming out from the scientific literature, but more importantly, from uh, our users and both from the doctor's side and on the patient side. I hear stories of improvement um, from the testing, from the supplementation, not only NMN, but NMN primarily. Um, I think the approach that we're taking is really making a difference. And we will continue this fight uh, to make uh, the right approaches uh, available to everyone who really wants to optimize their health and really uh, uh, keep their performance at a peak. So, um, you, you know, I'm in this in the long haul and it's going to take time to convince uh, uh, everyone. I think everyone needs to be uh, convinced. And the best way to convince anyone is through their own actions. I receive a uh, emails and phone calls every day from our users and they tell me how great uh, they, they feel and what the benefits they have received. Actually, last night, I received an email from, uh, from a customer and she said she was getting great uh, results from the uh, MM product we have and he, uh, she's trying to convince uh, her husband to take it. And that's what's happening. It's a snowballing process. And uh, you know, one person gets on the product and, and he or she feels the difference and gets the benefit. And that person is gonna take uh, tell uh, his or her own family members and then uh, their friends. It's, I think we have the momentum and we, have to convince the FDA and probably the Congress that they cannot take it off the market. And this is a supplement that's helping hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis. I don't see any reason, uh, scientific, medical, political, or social, whatever in whatever terms, this is something that we need to fight to keep on the market so uh, people can really benefit from what they can do. Well, definitely working toward towards that and very proud to be a part of that effort, you know, on behalf of the supplement industry. Um, it's just, it's a real honor. I'm uh, having another meeting soon with Dr. Fabricant along these lines and all of that discussion, all of that is still moving forward. I, I love nothing more um, than... When we had our conversation, he literally said, I'm going to file um, the motion right now, um, the citizen petition, which is what the Natural Products Association and another organization filed with the FDA um, to protest their move to try to take to to try to claim that um, NMN doesn't fit the de- the definition of a dietary supplement. That's r- technically what you know what the topic we're talking about at hand right now, and basically filed a, a citizen petition. It's the same process that they used successfully to overturn that decision by FDA on NAC. 
So we we have precedence and we're trying to, Enamin's a little different than NAC, but it's still a natural molecule that's giving, as Dr. Shi just said, hundreds of thousands of people. I think it's over a million people now from my own estimates, sales estimates. Um, it'd be interesting to find out more specifically how many people are taking NMN regularly, and hopefully we'll, we'll start getting closer to that data. But it's a lot. And so FDA, government, Congress, um, keep NMN available uh, so that Dr. Wright can continue to... Um, to have success stories with her patients and Dr. She can keep signing up a new clinic every day so that people can keep benefiting. Um, closing thoughts, Dr. Wright, and I'd love to talk to you more. I hope we get to do this many times because this feels like with Dr. She, the start of something cool. So I'd love to keep, keep dialogue going, but um, do you have any closing thoughts along those lines about, you know, even NMN, even, even the political aspect of this? Well, I think I said earlier that that maybe it was during the recorded part, maybe it was in our pre-call. Just before, that, I think, yeah, that's why I'm kind of yeah, I think pulling you back the, in. Yeah, I think that the attention to NMN and, it, and to uh, ha have it become part of the regulated drug pathway. I mean, let's look at that. In drug development, it is such a long pathway, and rightly so, right? It goes through three phases of trials. If this happens, it will not be available and it's taken off and not available. It will not be available for at least 10 years. It takes a long time to go through three rounds of phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials, right? So just to put it in a time frame, uh, the drug development time frame, number one. Number two, wow. you know, I don't know. I, I know it's going on, but this has happened before. There have been other highly um, uh, effective supplements, substances that have been tried to been corralled into the drug development pathways. And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So so I, I love the activ activism, but I frankly, as I said earlier, see this as maybe a backhanded compliment that NMN is helping so many people it it has shown such efficacy that it's gotten the attention uh and maybe through financial pathways because there are companies that you've named that have a financial interest in taking it off the supplement marketing putting it into the drug development pathway so you have to look at all motivations right just don't think that oh there's something wrong therefore it must be regulated i think that probably has very little to do with it i think it has to do with efficacy, follow the money, and and then please be aware, people, that drug development takes decades. So if, if this does happen to happen, it won't be available for quite a long time. So that's my only thoughts on this. I'm not a political nor usually activating per active person. I just teach my patients. We design programs that make them feel consistently amazing and and really take people from a point where they are falling apart to living in vibrant health. That it is that is enough motivation for me to keep going. So, and then I want to remind people. This is I guess I'll, this is a plug you can edit out. But I want to remind people. I my office is five minutes from the Orlando airport. So, getting the opportunity Absolutely. to benefit from my passion and become one of our. Uh, the private clients that want to live in optimum health and peak performance is really easy if you want to. I'm listening. You know, people cry in my office because I'm the kind of doctor who sits down and I listen and I'm listening. So if that's interesting, you know, you know where I am. I'm glad you brought that up because people would have asked. So that's great. Uh, no problem with that plug at all. Um, I'm glad you did that. And I'm glad you came uh, on. Can you give a website? Uh, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll, sure. Uh, so, you know, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. Vonda Wright. I hope a bunch of you friend me right now and, and we'll send some, I'll send some special tidbit today just for you. And then so at Dr. Vonda, V-O-N-D-A Wright, same website drvondawright.com. And, um, and I have a, uh, listen, probably nobody does this, but I have a special VIP phone number. You're welcome to call for direct information. It's 
232-2334. And we can send, leave your email. We'll send you information about how we take care of people. Can't beat that, guys. Come on. Got a, got a <laughs> VIP phone number. Got the website. Well, got no. Instagram, and you know you can just fly to Orlando and so you'll be there in five minutes. This has been awesome. I look forward to hearing more from both of you, as always. Uh, Dr. Shee, thanks for connecting us. Thanks again. And thank you, Dr. Wright. Um, yeah, I look forward to maybe seeing you in Florida next week when I'm when I I'll have to stop in and say hello. Please do. If you if your if your family would allow you 10 minutes, please do. I'll just I'll just leave them in line at you know at Space Mountain. At Disney, right? They, they enjoy the gym. You they said, won't even know I was gone. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, guys. All right. All right. Thank you so right. much.